This is a follow-up video to the object beds video I made. There were some comments in there that I thought were really great, really interesting. People were talking about the arrays a lot more than I expected because, you know, for music mixing, it's not really a big concern. So today we're going to look at that a little bit more. I've actually switched back over to the external Dolby Atmos renderer. Keep in mind, this is not the renderer that gets used for theatrical release. They have a more powerful version that gets used on the dub stages. This is for home entertainment. For me, I use it primarily for music. At some point, maybe I will start doing audio post that is Atmos, and I would use it for that for TV, short films, documentaries, things like that, but it's all home entertainment related. This is not theatrical. However, we do have some things in here, and what I want to look at is what happens when we go into array mode, because all I had were photos in the object bed video. I'm going to just send some signal. So to start with, I have a signal generator going here. It's just a 1K tone. We're not going to listen to it because it would be awful. And I have one version of this routed to an object bed and the other one routed to the bed. And I've just cranked the size parameter up on this so that we are going to put sound basically in every speaker everywhere. So to start, let's just turn on the bed. So there's our signal. We're lighting up all of the speakers. Right now we're configured for 714, so there's no arrays at play here. Now if I switch over to the object bed version, there's our object bed. We can see all those objects lighting up in there, but the meters, very similar. There's some stuff that's a little different in here. But ultimately, they're pretty similar. I'm not going to worry about this right now. That's something I can explore a little later. But let's go into array mode and see what happens. So let's pull up our room setup. So I'm going to turn on array mode, and I'm going to fire up every possible speaker option we can have. And you can already see, here are our arrays. So we've got the side array, side array, the height channels, this was something I didn't mention in the other video that I meant to. The dot two is there in the bed because the height, it's an array in larger theaters. And you can see that right here. So let's hit accept. Yeah, I'll fix this. Hold on a second. Okay, I had to straighten out some patching things because I don't normally have it configured for this. All right, so right away, we've got arrays for the height channels. As I mentioned, in a movie theater, those height channels, they are an array. That's why it is a dot two and why we don't have a dot four in the bed because in a large theater, you need to have a way to put stuff from front to back. Because again, those height channels in a big theater, they don't cover everybody. So to start with, let's see what happens. If I open up our signal generator into the bed, we're getting a lot of stuff. Now, and this is something that some of you guys mentioned in comments. Yes, we're not going to hit the wide speakers. So those aren't getting touched. There are also these LCRC, kind of left of center, right of center, I believe. We're not going to touch those either with that. Now, home theater guys, you probably don't have those. I don't think I've seen a lot of people with those in their home theaters, but that's another option for speakers if we really want to go crazy. Um, but those aren't addressed with those. An object would address them, though. Uh, left wide, right wide, an object would address those. Now, if I switch over to our object bed, let's see what happens with the signal. There we go. Very similar to what was happening in the pictures I had. So again, we're not addressing nearly as many speakers. I mean, you can just see it right there. You know, it's the object bed. We're getting discrete sound in locations, but not throughout the space. This is just the way this works. 
I'm sure there's other stuff going on in home theaters and things like that, up mixes, things like that might help with some of this, but this is just the way Atmos operates. Let's explore this a little bit more, and I'm going to shrink the size down and give us basically kind of a single point of sound. So right now I'm feeding the bed. So when I'm pan to the front left, we're only getting it out of that left channel. If I go to the center, we're just going to get the center. If I go in between the two, we're not going to hit this LC or the RC. We're just going to get the front left and the center. Now let's see what happens when I go to the side. Now we're getting into that array, which is on the left side. If I go to the left rear, we're going to get into that array. Same thing will happen in the right rear and on the right side. This is as I expect. Now, when I put it into the height, things are a little different. We're hitting this entire array. It doesn't matter if I'm in the front. It doesn't matter if I'm in the rear. We are just hitting that array because the array for the height, it's just two channels. It's just two channels in the bed. If I go more to the center, now we're going to get both of those height channel arrays active. So that's the way the bed works with height channels. Now let's look at the object bed. All right, so we're in the object bed. Again, if I'm pan to the left front or the center, we're hitting these objects and we're just lighting up those channels. If I go to the side, though, now we are only in this kind of discrete object location. Again, in the back, we're in this discrete object location. The thing that's going to be different with this object bed, though, is now we're going to have access to the front left and right and the rear left and right of our kind of height channels. So if I raise up the height, now we're hitting that left rear if I go to the front, we're in the right front, or left front, I should say, right front, right rear. We can hit those independently. Now, let's do one more thing. Let's take this object and let's actually send it to an object and see what happens when we are an object. Now, we can hit any speaker in the entire venue, including these RC speakers, including the wide speakers, because now we have this sort of discrete sound that the renderer will kick out of all the speakers that are near to it. If I go into the height channels, again, we get the same thing from front to back. You can just kind of see that. Now I can move it all around. So I hope this helps explain a little bit more about how Atmos works. This is just the way it works. I don't know what's going on in the movie theaters with processors they have in theory. It should be operating this way. Home theaters, again, in theory, they should all operate this way. But you know, things leave our studios, our dub stages, and sometimes we have no idea what happens to them because that is just the nature of the beast right now. But hope this helps clarify some things. If you've got a comment, something you want to add, please feel free and leave a comment below. But thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.